Hello, uh, my name is Tori Long and I'm a postdoctoral fellow at the Einstein study and also a nephrology fellow in Lund, Sweden. I want to tell you about our study where we propose revised reference intervals for certain free light chains in individuals with preserved kidney function and even a revised definition of light chain MGUS. Monoclonal gammopathy of endothermic significance or MGUS is the precursor to multiple myeloma and related lymphoproliferative disorders and, and it affects around 4.2% of the general population over the age of 50. As you know, it is characterized by the presence of monoclonal immunoglobulins on serum protein electrophoresis, immunofixation, or elevated free light chains with an abnormal FLC ratio without the presence of the un- of underlying multiple myeloma or other lymphoproliferative disease. Light chain MGUS is often discussed as a separate entity than other MGUS, as it's been shown to have lower risk of progression than other MGUS. However, it has been shown to be quite common or around 0.8% of the general population uh, over the age of 50. The serum-free light chain measurement is central in the detection, prognostication, and monitoring of lymphoproliferative disorders. Light chain MGUS is defined as an abnormal FLC ratio with the elevation of involved FLC without underlying lymphoproliferative disorders. Considering the important role of the FLC measurements in management of lymphoproliferative disorders in clinical practice, ensuring the accuracy of the reference intervals is crucial. But in recent years, there has been increasing evidence indicating that the existing reference intervals, which are based on a small cohort of only 282 individuals, may not accurately represent the true distribution of FLC in the general population. This inaccuracy is partly explained by effects of impaired kidney function on levels of FLC. Here are figures from a paper we published uh, last year that show the relationship of kappa on the y-axis in figure A, lambda in the figure B, and FLC ratio in figure C, and the EGFR on the x-axis. And as you can see, EGFR largely affects FLC levels with the rising kappa, lambda, and FLC ratio with decreasing EGFR. In that paper, we proposed new redefined reference intervals for FLC in individuals with impaired kidney function, and that are shown in this table. That is with an estimated GFR below 60 and then stratified by kidney function. However, emerging evidence suggests inaccurate serum FLC levels and FLC ratio also in individuals with preserved kidney function or EGFR above 60. If this is true, it would have significant consequences with overdetection of presumed plasma cell disorders, causing unnecessary invasive testing, impact on treatment response evaluations, and overdiagnosis of light chain MCUS, which requires long term follow up with needless use of healthcare resources and patient stress. The aims of this study was therefore to assess the distribution of kappa lambda and the FLC ratio in terms of the standard reference intervals revise the FLC reference intervals for individuals with preserved kidney function, or ETFR above 60, and based on these and previous findings to propose a new definition of light chain MGUS. To do this, we used the ISTAP MM study cohort of over 75,400 persons over the age of 40 who have been screened for MGUS. The persons with MGUS were then randomized into three arms. Arm one was unaware of MGUS status, and continued regular care in the Icelandic healthcare system. Arms two and three were called into a clinical study center for further evaluation and follow up, including bone marrow sampling of non low risk MGUS in arm two and everyone in arm three. In the reference interval part of the study, we excluded all with positive immunofixation for M protein, EGFR below 60, or were missing creatinine measurements. And those we also excluded those with a known lipoproliferative disorder before or at screening. We determined central 99% reference intervals for kappa, lambda, and the FLC ratio, and we split up the intervals based on the rate of abnormality within the subgroups of age, sex, and EGFR. We considered light chain MGUS as an abnormal FLC ratio with the same time abnormally high involved FLC, without evidence of M protein on immunofixation or end organ damage due to a plasma cell disorder. Then on to the results. Here we can see the distribution of measured levels of serum-free kappa in the figure on the left, lambda in the center figure, and FLC ratio on the fig- on the right. The y-axis displays age groups below 70 years and 70 years and older, and the x-axis the level of FLC. The important thing here is the green lines that are the current standard reference intervals. And as you can see, 
the current references do not fit well. The median age was 60 years, median EGFR 84 milliliters per minute, and 43% were male. The median kappa level was 14.3 milligrams per liter, median lambda 14.2 milligrams per liter, and the median FLC ratio was 1.02. Using the standard reference intervals yielded a high rate of abnormal results in the cohort. The proportion of abnormal results was 17.5% for kappa, 4% for lambda, and 3.7% for the FLC ratio. And in almost all cases, abnormal levels meant abnormally high FLC levels. Here we have established revised reference intervals for persons with preserved kidney function. And due to change with age, we stratified the reference intervals by age below 70 years and 70 years and older. Based on our new reference intervals for FLC and FLC ratio for individuals with EGFR 60 and above, and our previously published renal reference intervals, here we propose a new definition of light chain amicus, where you have a person without underlying lymphoproliferative disease and negative serum protein electrophoresis and immunofixation for M protein. You check the kidney function and then the age in those with EGFR 60 or higher. And this leads you through the references for different subgroups till you can determine whether the person has light chain angus or not. Utilizing the new definition of light chain angus for the whole ISTOP-MM cohort, that is that we included all persons both with EGFR below 60 and 60 or higher, the overall, pre the overall prevalence of light chain angus was 0.26% with 54% was kappa and 46% was lambda. The prevalence was higher in men and increased with age, as is shown in the figure on the right. When we used the old reference intervals for those with preserved kidney function, the prevalence was much higher, or 1.54%. This means that using our new revised definition of light chain angus yields a relative decrease of individuals labeled as light chain angus by 83%. Importantly, among the group of individuals diagnosed with light chain amicus based on the previous reference intervals who did not meet the diagnostic criteria using our revised reference intervals, or over 1,000 individuals, none had progressed to a lymphoproliferative disorder after a median follow-up of three and a half years. And of those individuals with available bone marrow results in the group that we are now undiagnosing with light chain amicus, none had smoldering disease. To make life easier for the clinicians, we have made an online calculator where you can put in the kappa and lambda values, the age of the patient and EGFR, and it will tell you whether these parameters are compatible with light chain MCUS. You can access the calculator at istopmm.com slash light chain MCUS, or by scanning this QR code, which will guide you directly to our calculator. To summarize, Using data from the largest population screening study of monoclonal gammopathies to date, we have de demonstrated that among persons with preserved kidney function, the standard reference intervals for kappa FLC, lambda, and the FLC ratio are inaccurate. This causes high rates of false positive kappa and false negative lambda monoclonal gammopathies. We propose novel reference intervals for serum free kappa, lambda, and the FLC ratio that is stratified by age, below 70 years and 70 years and older. Based on these findings, along with our previous findings in persons with impaired kidney function, we propose a new definition of light chain MGUS. Implementing the new definition de decreases the rate of false diagnosis of light chain MGUS by more than 8%. This, in consequence, will alleviate the unwarranted psychological and financial burden driven by clinical assessment and lifelong monitoring of these individuals. Finally, I would like to thank all our collaborators and supporters our amazing ISTOP MM team, and first and foremost, our study participants for their invaluable contribution. Thank you.